Hey. Dun, 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 dun. All right. When that beat kicks in, it's the Socrates right here. Let's talk about it. Okay. Socrates is a Canadian rap artist. He's from Toronto, he's from Scarborough. All right. I'm I'm not gonna rep Scarborough. I've always lived in the East. I'm close enough to Scarborough. I got friends in Scarborough, so I, I'm not really a Scarborough dude. But you know, I'm close enough where I can fake it. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, the best rappers come out of Scarborough, man. You guys know this. Let me just make that clear. I right? the best rappers, the best producers. When it comes to this rap shit, you talking about Scarborough? Now that's a strong statement. Let me talk about Scarborough for a second, right? Scarborough's on the east side of Toronto. When the east is in the house, oh my god. Scarborough's kind of unique because it reminds me of Queens personally, right? Like, before I kind of really spent time in New York, I used to go to Scarborough, whatever, hang out. Like, there's people I know out there who are, you know, just chilling and doing stuff. And the thing with Scarborough is that it's far away from Toronto. In the sense, I mean, it's part of Toronto, like, you know. The six, right? But it's kind of like in this like warehousey, abandoned sort of Toronto, and that's kind of interesting to me because it's it's hip hop again, right? I mean, you think about where hip hop started. It started out in the you know bombed out Bronx and shit, like you know what I'm saying depleted areas, places where people don't really go like that. Like people don't just hang out in Scarborough. People don't just go to Scarborough. You know what I mean? Like in the West End, yeah, the West End is Jamaican and it's hood too, but. That's at least close enough to Toronto. Like you can you can pass through the West End. You know what I mean. But the East is like, why would you go to the East? You know what I mean. But of course, that's where the hip hop in Toronto is kind of thriving. Really, you know, that's where you get the hottest producers. Boy Wonder, North York and Scarborough, right? Socrates, Scarborough, Maestro Fresh West, Scarborough, Citizen Kane, Scarborough, Mathematics, Scarborough, right? Like you're talking about like the best to do this stuff. When it comes to Canada, you know what I'm saying? Drake, obviously not from Scarborough, but he runs with Scarborough goons, from what I understand, right? And young Tony and them, who he was like getting flows and ideas from, Scarborough, right? So Scarborough slang. Like, I mean, there's something to be said about what Scarborough has put up in this rap shit when it comes to Canadian rap shit, right? And like I was saying, I think it's just because of the fact that Scarborough sucks. I mean, with all due respect to my Scarborough folk, you know what I mean? Like, there's not much to do out there but rap and do hood shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's like a, it's kind of like Queens in the Bronx mixed together in a way. You know what I'm saying? People still got their backyards and shit like that. And, you know, it's not like congested necessarily like, um, like the West End to a certain degree. You know what I mean? Like, most people... Um, in Scarborough, there's a little more space, but uh, it's like a, it's like weird, you know, it's a weird place to be at. Like the roads don't quite go places and shit like that. Like, um, so maybe that'll add to the energy of what it means to be in Scarborough. And uh, from what I understand, there used to be like a famous arts program or whatever that was set up actually in Scarborough or close to Scarborough, um, like close to my area, where a lot of these rappers went to school at. And uh, they all met each other and things like that. And so that arts program helped them sort of become better rappers. They, they learn music and um, film and things like that. So obviously they had the talent, but they also worked on that talent. Whereas in the West, from what I understand, it wasn't quite the same. Like the West End was, was hood, you know. And when I'm talking about West End in Toronto, I'm talking about like Eglinton and uh, Marley and shit like that, right? Like the West End. Anyway, Toronto people know what I'm talking about. So, Socrates, right? Socrates is one of these guys that people could argue would say, like, top... He's certainly top five. I, I think he's easily top five in Canada ever. I would, in fact, put him in top three, right? Like, before Drake, I would have said Socrates was the guy. That, like, if you have to talk about Canadian hip-hop, you gotta talk about Socrates first. But I do think that Drake has surpassed Socrates, obviously, in, in, in a lot of ways. And then, in some ways, not quite. Um, so we'll talk about Socrates here. Sox is a producer and a rapper, and that's what made him really interesting is that he was just talented at both, really. Um, if I had to say where he was better at, I would say that he was a slightly better producer in my opinion. Um, I think one of the criticisms that you could give Sox is that his rapping, while dope, 
it felt like he was doing Jerry the damage to a certain degree, right? Um, you could make that, you know, slight criticism. But he was talented at both. I mean, he made beats, he, he rapped, and he was good at both. So, his first song, I think, was Still Caught Up. He's still Caught Up. I, I feel that that was his first record, and that was like 94 or something like that. And then, of course, he came with Father Time, which was like an underground, um, you know, classic, really. Actually, it's a classic record, and from what I understand, even got played on Stretch and Bobito, right? So, um, you know, Socrates did help put Toronto on the map, right? And this instrumental that you're hearing in the background, this is Play This, right? Which is actually my favorite Socrates record, period, right? And that was with Common, and they both killed it. And that was like 97 or something like that. Socks did the beat. The remix is dope too, right? So Socks had a lot of talent, and um, he used to come out with a lot of shit that's pretty decent, actually. Um, you know, obviously produced for other people as well. He worked with like Marvel. Um, he worked with Julie Black, he worked with Tara Chase and um, Cardinal and you know, so they were all kind of like a, a crew, they called the Circle and shit like that, that they used to run out with right here in Toronto. Um, as a guy who didn't really grow up in Toronto, I was born here, but I didn't really grow up here. So I kind of discovered a lot of this stuff in the mid 2000s when I came back, right? Because that's kind of really when I came into Toronto and like spent a lot of time. Like I would come back and forth in the 90s, but the 2000s is when I was like really out here like I remember even hearing like Solitaire who I'll talk about maybe at some point but like I remember hearing Solitaire when I was going to Queens in like 2002 and just being like yo who's a Solitaire cat right so coming into Toronto in the mid 2000s is when I started to really listen to Toronto hip-hop and do my knowledge and do my history and then I met some like you know rappers and pioneers and all that shit and that made me dig even more so I think that Socrates of all of the people that rapped in Toronto and made you know music and stuff like that, I do think Socrates is the guy you gotta remember and you gotta talk about. You know, in fact, Socrates helped put Drake on, from what I understand too, because when Drake was coming out, like he did records with Socrates, he did one or two songs at least. I think one of Socrates' um, engineers that he used to work with, a dude named Gadget. Um, again, for those of y'all who know your Toronto history better than me, please correct me if I'm wrong, but. Um, Gadget ended up working with Drake and helping Drake's career out. And I think Sox even mentored Drake. So it's not really surprising that Drake ended up becoming as big as he became. Because the thing with Canada, man, in my experience is that, yeah, while Canadians aren't really hip-hop folk like that, I mean, it's not like a hip-hop country at all. Toronto's not a hip-hop city at all, in my opinion. It's a very pop and rock city. With that said, and of course, the black people are into reggae mostly, like it's a West Indian, you know, type of city. With all that said, there are people in Canada that know hip hop better than 99% of most Americans. And I would argue because of two things. One, we're close enough to New York. I mean, the history, when you look at the people that were rapping in New York, they would come to Toronto first and do shows a lot of times before they started doing shows even outside of the tri-state area. So we got a lot of early shit. Like, I've heard stories of KRS and Nas and them coming out here. Like Main Source, for example, right? Y'all talk about Main Source and Nas live at a barbecue. Y'all don't know that K Cut was one of the influential members of Main Source. And K Cut is a Canadian cat. He's from Toronto. I've met K Cut. I actually did an interview with K Cut like 10 years ago, right? So there's always been that Canada US connection, particularly that Toronto New York connection, right? And so we've been up on shit actually fairly early. Like I've heard stories of cats who are up on, you know, press runs and you know press runnings and tests of Illmatic and shit and songs before a lot of people outside of New York even got them albums. So there are people out here that know their shit, right? Like not that it's you know sort of celebrated like that, but my point is that there are some cats in Toronto that really really study this rap shit, that know this rap shit and have actually low key contributed a lot to this hip hop shit. So they gave all their knowledge to Drake in a way, right? When Drake started really becoming that guy, they started really working with him, right? And uh, that's why Drake, I would argue, is one of the smartest rappers in the rap game and has been for a long period of time. Because there are people out here that know their shit. I forgot to mention that, um, speaking of Scarborough, I don't know if I mentioned that Boy Wonder was, I think he's North York Scarborough sort of uh, connection as well. So there's a lot going on out here, man, when it comes 
comes to this rap shit. Like Scarborough's really putting it down. Maestro Fresh West. You know, like there's a long history. So talking about Socrates, I would say my favorite songs of him are Play This, obviously, Father Time, and um, Hate Runs Deep. I think those are the three essential Socrates joints. You know what I mean? Um, and he has a bunch of other ones as well that you can listen to. Uh, people like Money and Love and things like that. But those three I mentioned, yeah, that's essential socks. And that's it, man. I'll, you know, talk more about some Kenyan rap artists. Um, you know who I would love to talk about at some point? Tara Chase. I'm going to do a Tara Chase video um, at some point. So, but Socrates, man, is a legend. And shout out to Socrates if any of these people ever see this. But, um, you know, he's a good dude from what I've seen. I mean, I've seen him live once. And, um, you know, he did it. Good job, right? So, like, someone like that. I mean, I heard him when I was in Saudi, man. Like, so he was, like, the first Canadian rapper I've even heard of. I didn't really know he was Canadian. But I remember he was on a song with Redman. And I think he had a relationship with Redman for a while. He was on Gila House. But I didn't really materialize into anything. Um, people in Toronto don't really talk about their histories like that, which is kind of why I started to do interviews back then, but it never really materialized into a whole lot. My point is, I would love to know how come Socrates didn't end up becoming bigger, because I do think that he had the talent for it, you know, like he produced a lot, like for people and things like that, but, you know, maybe he was just comfortable being in, in Toronto, which is fine, I mean, nothing wrong with that. Anyway, have a good one.